that word give it life. It give it understanding unto the same thing. Only the word of God can change your world. As you listen to this broadcast by Christian Information Network Ministry, your world shall shout. Shout hallelujah. If you know what prayer can do, shout a louder hallelujah. No one prays and is ever put into shame. If you pray and you don't get answer to your prayers, then check yourself. Many a times we want to begin to blame somebody else or some people looking at um, the demon in their father's house before you begin to look at the demon or the powers in your father's house check your life first because the bible says we cannot continue in sin and ask for grace of god to abound so the one of the things you see if you go if god if your prayers is being answered and you know that you are not doing what is right then it becomes dangerous hallelujah but i want to tell you that the lord will answer your prayers and that's why we are talking on the manifold manifestations of God in our lives and uh, you know every service in this church is connected for example in the vigil the vigil was titled manifold grace it was still the continuation and a lot of people that was not the only one but maybe I was the one that preached less praise God but every coordinator every that I preach were connecting to the same focus you know of the manifold expectations and so whether it is in the any of the service it does you don't miss service for you to have the total package of what God is going to do in your life I believe that God will speak to us again this morning in the name of Jesus <clears throat> shall we pray father we thank you we're grateful Lord for bringing us together thank you for sustaining us since last Sunday thank you for your protection thank you for your provisions thank you for your blessings upon our lives father we return glory adoration and thanksgiving to you Lord in Jesus name our Lord and our God we ask that as we look into your word again this morning father i pray that you will stir up our hearts stir up our faith in the name of jesus thank you father because you have answered <clears throat> in jesus name we have prayed a loud amen god bless you you may be seated now still talking on manifold manifestation manifold manifestations and of course when we talk about God's manifestations we're talking about what God is capable of doing the various ways various manners various interventions that God can do in the life of a man manifolds manifolds like one of the person who took the prayer during the vigil try to explain what manifold and uh, describe it from the way you see an onion then when you look at an onion if you peel off part of an onion there is another part that you can keep on opening here keep on opening there is that also now every fold that you um break from onion is a crunch it is edible right now if you eat that or you make use of that and you open it again now every 
part that you pull out of that onion <clears throat> is as good as edible. Very, very edible. Now, the same thing is what Manifold is talking about. We are saying that our God is an all-sufficient God. And of course, I explain that God is not just a specialist in one field. Just like the where I started all this when I started talking about you know the physicians, the doctors, the doctors we call consultants in the hospitals, especially the teaching hospitals. But as some such doctors are that are called physicians or consultants, they have field of specialization. They will never dive into another field that is not theirs. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. When you say somebody is a PhD holder, at times, you know, you say somebody is a PhD holder. As far as I'm concerned, he's a PhD in that field on a very minute part of that field. Praise God. I would say that the place where academics is at is in the first degree. When you have to do everything, everything, everything. Praise God. But when you are getting to the master's level, that's why I say you are a master. You master an aspect. Before you now proclaim to have a doctor of philosophy, in other, other areas, if it is mathematics, for example, there are different parts of mathematics. Algebra is there. I am a simultaneous equation. I don't know how these things know. <laughs> Praise God. Shout hallelujah. It's quite some years now. I don't want to bother my head about all those things. Amen. Especially when it's not bringing money to my purse. Praise God. But for those that is bringing money to their purse, uh -huh. Pastor Tywin like that, they can bother themselves about. Uh... But you see, we have geometry. We have algebra. We have this aspect. We have this aspect. Now, if someone is uh, it's having a doctor of philosophy a PhD holder even if it is in algebra it will not be all the areas of algebra it will just be a little part of it so when you say someone is a specialist he's only a specialist on what he knows and that's why you see you should go to a teaching hospital that I'll be using as an example I, a urologist will not double into a pediatrician's case. A pediatrician will not double into another field, you know, that has to do whether with the kidney or that. You know, he will not go into any area that is not his field. He may have a scanty knowledge at the first degree level, praise God. But at that particular point that he say is a specialist, is a physician, a little aspect. But Jesus Christ, being the great physician, is a specialist in all fields. Shout hallelujah. So, when we talk about the manifold manifestations, we are saying that God is a God that do his things, that does miracles, that intervenes in the life of human in every areas of life. You are here this morning. There is no body you carry that God does not know about. Because it's the all knowing God. Hallelujah. We said God is so many signs. Which means he's a scientist that knows all things. We said God is omnipresent. Omni means present means that he's everywhere. Even when you lock your doors, it's there. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. And so if you want to commit sin and say nobody sees me, just know that somebody is seeing you. God sees you. And we say that is omnipresent, omniscience, and what? Omni what? Omnipotent. It's omnipotent. means that he has the power. He has the strength. He has all that it takes to do all things. So, God is not limited. God is not a limited liability. Our God is Jehovah unlimited. 
And I'm saying this to put faith into your heart. For you to be glad if you're a child of God. For you to understand that God knows everything about your life. And he can do all things. And I see him surprising you. In the name of Jesus Christ. So manifold, manifold manifestations can also be called manifold grace. Because grace manifests in different aspects of our lives. Let's start off reading this morning as we read from the book of um, First Peter. Let's look at First Peter chapter 5 verse 10. First Peter chapter 5 verse 10. Sorry, First Peter chapter 5, Pastor, yes. I'm going to read from here. All right, you have it on the screen. Good. He's saying, But the God of all grace, God of what? The word all means that grace is in multiple. Is to say that grace is in folds. The God of all grace. There is nothing you need in life that grace does not attend to. Hallelujah. You see, grace is a carrier. Grace lifts a man. Grace makes you to perform beyond your human ability. It's good to read. But you have not seen somebody who study and study and study, burn all the midnight candles. But he gets to the place of exam, he forgot all that he has read. Have you had that before? Even if it has not happened to you. And somehow it has happened to you, at least in a little way. I said, and I read this thing. And I'm here now. And it was something I read. And I understood I even taught people. Oh, we are now. Praise God. You just get there. You try to look at it. Maybe you won't put your leg inside water when you are reading it. You will remember all the, the drama you put in place to assimilate. But yet, write it now. And that's why you see that time they said, uh, examination is not the true test of knowledge. But whether you like it or not, in this part of the world, is the test of knowledge. Praise God. But when grace is there, it is grace that brings performance. It's grace that makes your efforts to count. And no matter, say, and I do this and I tried, and I tried. If people are not interested in your trial, they want to see the manifestations. The Bible said the creations, that is all that God has created, they are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. No story. Not that and I can do it. It is no story. Tell us. Show it. Yoruba proverb says, the person who wants to, you know, who say I'm going to sew dress for you. Say you will look at the kind of one on his neck. And it will be the ash of if somebody comes and the dress and it's as if it is the carpenter that sew his dress or sew her dress the gown is uh, somehow, somehow and they say ah. you always say which kind of bricklayer that sew this dress for you and the now person says don't worry you should trust me I will sew dress for you I'm sure you will run for your life praise God you can be sure that the one he puts on his neck, if it's as terrible, the one is going to be a gift to you would be worse. Amen. But if somebody dresses very well, I say, Oh, I like your dress. I like you. You are looking good. You look smart. This dress is good. Especially for ladies who are very inquisitive. Say, who is your tailor? That's the next thing. Abby. They want to know who is the tailor. 
And that person said, oh, you like it? Don't worry. I'm going to get one for you. What do you do? You smile. Is that not so? Because you can be sure that what you like in that person, you are going to have it. So, people talk about results. And I don't live my life on sentiment. I've said it, you know, severally here. Ah, sir, you want to do birthday cake, especially if it is a landmark in my life. If it's not landmark, you can bring any kind of cake. Maybe nobody will see it. Praise God. But I want to do a birthday, and I said, I'm inviting people to come and do birthday with me. I say, sir, trust me. I can bake your cake. I can do your pastor. Trust me. I will not trust you. I want to see the one you have done. Praise God. <laughs> you can only convince me when you bring the one you have done and I tasted it. I say, you mean you did, you have the one that have done this one. Eh? Now, you now want me to give you to go and do cake and the day of the celebration, it's just as if it is a, it is a, a bar that is coated with, a flour, <laughs> coated with sugar. And now you say, ah, I'm sorry, sir. That sorry cannot redeem the situation. The, the word, you know, I, do, I don't like the word sorry. It's better to do things not to say sorry. Praise God. Because when you have brought disappointment, sorry cannot redeem that situation. Can you redeem it? You know you can do sharp man. They now give you sharp man to come and do. Eh? It's now become sharp woman. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I now say, ah, everybody began to leave the cup. Everybody don't drink it. I now say, sir, I'm very sorry. I'm, and I try my best. Your trial is not the trial that I need. So that's how it is. People are expected to see a result. Not your efforts. But I'm introducing to you what spices your effort. And that is grace. It is something to have skill. Even the best skilled person, that person that made that cake, he may be he or she may be good, but there are things that the point of, of, of manifestation that can mess up things. There are still forces of darkness, whether we like it or not. There are powers of darkness. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I know people who live in abroad don't believe that there are demons in Africa. I'm sure brochures they believe there are demons here. Praise God. Aha. You know, abroad at times there is no demon. Amen. Yes. We were talking yesterday now. He was telling me where he lives is even more organized than America. Wow. Somebody is living in a place that is more organized than America. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then you want that person to, to you know, which means those who are in advanced country, they don't pray about water. They don't pray about the light. They don't even pray about food. Amen. They don't pray about all those things. They don't pray and say, God, as I'm going, no, I don't want to be late. Don't let me be late. They cannot be late because the time the boss is going to take off and the time he's going to get to his destination is already determined. Hallelujah. If you are driving your car now, you want to set out and you want to where you are going. The GPS, uh, the GPA, GPS, eh, we tell you how many hours that you wait. At times, at, at times, I wonder why how that science is put in place. Then you will say you are going to spend one hour fifteen minutes, and as it's taking you through that one hour fifteen minutes, you will have prepared. You, you have seen the road where there is no hold up. If there is going to be any Greek lock, he, has, he will tell you that there is a Greek lock for 15 minutes at a particular place. But at the same time, you get your destination at exact time. And when, you know, there are cases, you know, those of us that are very inquisitive. I will say, we are taking and say, are we very close to the place? I say, if I want to preach, and they give me time. And the person said, I will get there before that time. I mean, exact time. And I now look at it, ah, it remains five minutes. And maybe you are still on the highway. I begin to say, we have no branch. And you, yours your sincerely, at the nick of time, you have arrived at your destination. Praise God. You want those people to believe there is a demon that can uh, delay you on the road. 
Praise God. They will not. They, will not, they, they don't bother about that. Amen. But you, you are here now. They have come to my office. The person who came, I sent him away. I said, I don't want to hear that the generator that we used yesterday is not working again this morning. I said, then what do you want me to do? Go and solve it. I don't want to hear anything. I cannot be planning how to preach and begin to think that generator is not. Don't bring it to me. Shout hallelujah. Then, the generator that we still use for vigil and it's not working this morning. The question is that what happened? Maybe people in the technical department, praise God. Maybe there are demons that want to do <laughs> Amen. But where they don't use generator? Do they, do, they, do they have that kind of problem? Children that are born 20 years, they have never seen the light go off for once in their life. They don't know what darkness is like in the night. And you now said such a person, pray that every spirit of darkness, he will look at you, what one? Which one is spirit of darkness? How does it look like? Praise God. But you and I, we know that there is spirit of darkness. Three of us. Um, no, you don't pray. Eh? You will see that. That's why you have done all that you need to do. Eh? Spirit of darkness can manifest at any time. Whether it is only in Africa, I don't know. Praise God. But we'll conquer it one of these days. But while we are still here, I am saying there is something called grace. Grace is God's intervention. Is the release of God's presence, God's power in situations. The best of man is not enough. Hello? The best of man is not enough. In that business, the best is not enough. I have contacted it. This everything is ready. Hey, this and that, this and that. And uh, when it is there, ah, the, the minister has promised. And a day to that promise, everything is set. The president just changed the minister. He took him to another office and somebody reported there. Everything that one that is awaiting, begin again. And that person also wants to do favor to the people he knows. Is that not so? That is here. That's part of this world. If it is over there, it's not like that. They have done that appraiser, uh, what do you call it now? All the uh, committee has met. They have done everything. Now it is just for the minister to sign. Okay? Nigeria is not like that. Too. If it is over there, they believe that the work, what has been done, has been done. Is that not so? The next person will just assent his signature. But Nigeria, <laughs> the minister, power don't come. It will sit very well. When he says, I, say, I don't want to see it now. I'm still understanding. I'm still reading the file. And by the time you look at that, yes, said that you will query memo to, to permanent secretary. What, tell me what has been done to arrive to the time that I supposed to sign this thing. Well, I don't start with that. And before you know it, you will say now, well, I don't believe in the process. He's the minister. What can you do about that? He does not believe. He does not believe. Hallelujah. The money for the ministry is already budgeted. The president is not going to tell him how he's going to spend it. And that's at times when they begin to do this and that, they will have a lot of money on spent in the budget of the year. Because of bottlenecks. So you say you are into contract, you are into business, and you don't operate in grace. How do you want to make it? How do you want to succeed? You will do a lot of things. You know the funniest thing in Nigeria? Before you even get to the point that your file is in the front of the, of the president or the minister or the governor to be signed, eh? you have spent a lot of money. I mean, do the do that are doing contract. Is it not true? You have spent a lot of money. Even if it is not, if you don't call it bribe, praise God, you call it appreciation. Nigeria has a lot of language to escape from the real thing. In those days, they say kickback. It's no longer kickback. It is uh, appreciation. Amen. Because if you don't do it, your file will not leave where it is. So when you are a contractor, you come and say, oh, Oga, Oga, oh, Oga. Ah, you're welcome, sir. Ah, that Oga, <laughs> he's been taking care of them. But the one that comes and even ordinary messenger will see that, ah, oh, the king on the, ah, so I didn't see you. Ah, he can't, he doesn't see you, no, there's nothing you can do to a messenger. Somebody that in your own office, 
cannot even be a cleaner. Praise God. He will just look at you and say, that useless man, anytime he comes, just begin to decide. He can be the messenger that go and put your fire. If it's at the top, he put it under. Hallelujah. So you have spent a lot of money to make sure that at least the right thing you are doing. You are not saying you are not going to do the right thing. But for people to even know that you are not, uh, uh, what do you call it now? You are not stingy. You know, to do the needful, to help you, to do, to do what this, it is their job. But at least to encourage them to do it. You have done that. And alas, at a very critical point, there is a disapproval. I read that scripture again. But the, the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you what? Perfect, establish, strengthen, you will be settled this month. So it is God of all grace. He said, after you have been tested, what he's saying there is that after you have suffered, after you have waited, after you have test, been tested, after you have passed through the wilderness experience, you know, there is always a testing time to see the integrity of your heart. That the reason why you are seeking after God, it is not because of what you want to grab from him. That you are serving God because you love him. You give your life to Christ because you want to make it to heaven. And you appreciate what Jesus Christ has done for you. He said, he is the one that has called us into what? His eternal glory. Shout hallelujah. You know, I can dwell on this scripture alone and hand my sermon. If you understand, the revelation is given to us. That if somebody is born again, you are already where? In God's eternal glory. Not that you are going there. If you are saved, there is something that you are welcome into. And it is God's eternal means forever. A bit? Something that does not end. Shout hallelujah. When the Shekinah glory of God envelopes your life, then you are covered. Your case is settled. So, we are called. Say, through Jesus Christ, God has called us into that glory. Through Jesus Christ, that is through the redemption that Jesus Christ provided, made available, his death on the cross, the blood that was shed, we are redeemed. We are saved. We are now children of God. We are not called into shame. We are called into what? His glory. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's why you see people of God. Ah, this Christianity is sweet. Oh. Did you hear what I've just said? To be a Christian is sweet. Oh. Ah, he's sweet. Oh. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. To be born again is sweet. Oh. Because your case is settled. No matter your suffering, which I call challenges, there is a glory. You are already in glory. God is just testing you or allow you to be tested. It's after you have suffered, not forever. It's for a while. And as I know that any situation, it has been a guide over the years that any situation that is unpleasant I find myself it will not be forever I will get out of it my own is to keep on trusting God and to keep on praying hallelujah some people say they want to go and commit suicide of what they are passing through ah, because you have not listened to the story of others if you see what others are passing through some people say yeah I'm going to pack my load from the house of my husband Eh? because he's, he's, he's making me to suffer he's not taking care of me wow you have not listened to other story of others and you have not no you have not you have not uh, realized that when that face passes the god of all grace will show off will show forth amen no matter what you have lost no matter how men have cheated you no matter how men have treated you. David said, God, you allow men to ride over our heads. 
And yet, after some time, you brought us to a wealthy place. That's why God permitted it. Men to ride over our heads. We are called names. They told lies against us. We are treated as if we are not, we don't matter. Your goodwill at times is turned to foolishness before your very eyes. Praise God. And people will look at you and say, you are stupid. <laughs> Praise God. Never mind. Don't fight back. The Bible says God allows it. Oh, it's my mistake. Well, God allows it. Whatever has happened has happened. But there is always a way of escape. He now said that this, that, that after all said and done, Samit said, the Sam said, you brought us to a wealthy place. You brought us to a wealthy place. A place of comfort. A place of satisfaction. God will bring you to a wealthy place. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It pays to serve Jesus. When I'm preaching, I'm not preaching from just theory. I'm not preaching just, I'm preaching of what I know. What I have experienced over the years. What I am assured of. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm not, I've never thought over the years to say that, okay, let me abandon this road and go and join another road. I don't need any other fast lane. Amen. Because, you see, praise God, I was talking to my, uh, to one of my uh, children, in my last one, I said, don't worry. I need a car too, new car too. Don't worry. Let's, let's, the one that we are doing, me and your mom, we are just, let's finish our assignment. Praise God. It is for a while. Now, when you have now raised your children and God has helped you to push them to a place they can stand on their own. Hallelujah. Is it now that if you don't do akipanki, I don't know whether that is a grammatical work, <laughs> word, you know. If you don't do all those things and God help you to deliver, to help your children, eh? now it remains you and your wife. And we see you have good life ahead. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Is that time that God will abandon me? Is that that time you now begin to do what you did not do before? No wonder the Bible said the pathway of a righteous man is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto a new day if somebody is a child of god say your day you can, darkness cannot overcome you say the path of a righteous man is like a shining light that shines brighter when it is 5 a.m and the i mean and is that that is the light is coming around 5 a.m now you can see your you can see things you know little by little you can still walk out is that not so but before you know it when it is six there is brightness when it is seven there is brightness when it is around 10 o'clock some begin to show off praise god and that that's why the bible says that is the pathway of a righteous man now i don't know maybe you are the 4 a.m you must have an assurance that 2 p.m. is coming. Is somebody hearing me? Yes, it may be 5, 5 a.m. You may be at 7 a.m. It's as if it is not yet full day. But let me tell you, you don't need no people with prayer. We have been praying. No people ever pray and say, God, it is 7 a.m. God, let it, let, it, let, it, let it be. Let it be 12 noon. Let it be 1 p.m. Have you ever prayed that prayer before? Eh? Unless you are stupid. Or the person is foolish. Why? It is the mechanism that heaven has put in place. I mean, that the day gets brighter and brighter and brighter. And that's why you can set your time. When it is 1 p.m., let's have the meeting. When it is 2 p.m., I'll be with you. Praise God. Because you know the time you'll be sleeping. You know the time when you are fully awake. Is that not so? And you know when the evening comes, some other things that now. That is that. Say that is the way our life is. Now, whichever part you are at the moment, if you are in the 6 a.m., believe that the 2 a.m. is coming, 2 p.m. is coming. If you are at the 2 p.m., there is another time of 4 p.m. that is coming. Shout hallelujah. The path of a righteous man is like a shining light and it shines brighter and brighter and brighter. 
my prayer for you this morning is that your life will not wind back yeah. things that you have overcame or that you have overcome such things will not reappear before you yeah. the steps that you have taken to march forward there will not be any retrogression yeah. i say what you have conquered will not overcome your life because it is shining brighter 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 until a new day until when it's a new day the path of a righteous man is a, like a shining light is shining brighter and brighter let's look at that scripture let me conclude that scripture the bible says who has called us unto eternal glory the opposite of glory is shame Abby. you will not suffer shame give me that scripture who has called us unto eternal glory through christ jesus he has called us to eternal glory through christ jesus he, this god through jesus through the redemption who has called us unto eternal glory amen, amen. technical give me that scripture shout hallelujah he now tells us that after that ye have suffered, you have been tested for a while. He will make you perfect. Oh, he will establish you. Oh, he will strengthen you. Oh, he will settle you. We'll come back to that scripture to use to pray. You want to go to say, God, you have promised that you are going to perfect me. Lord, bring my life to perfection. My spiritual life to perfection. Lord, you have said that you will establish me. Enough of zigzag. Enough of displacement. In my work, establish me. In my destiny, establish me. Ah, God, you say you will strengthen me. Lord, remove every form of weakness. Every emotional weakness. Every intellectual, you know, weakness. Every, every spiritual weakness every strength physical weakness you say you're going to strengthen me the grace will bring strength is the grace that brings establishment and he will settle shout hallelujah that is what the manifold grace of god is all about that is what manifold manifestation is all about hallelujah i say hallelujah Let's give me first Peter chapter 4, verse 10. He says, As every man hath received, first Peter 4 10, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of manifold grace of God. Now, looking at this scripture also. Is telling us that everything that we do is a function of grace. Praise the Lord. I am preaching now. It is not Francis. It is the grace of God. But he's now saying that let everybody as you have received. You see, where people run into problem is that they get out of grace. I think I said it in the vigil you see somebody who wants to turn himself to a prophet because it's just like it's the prophet that is selling now Unlunjawo. praise God you know the Yoruba Unlunjawo. there are some of you that you still run after prophets when you come around you look like a gentle person you run after prophets you know all the mountains because you don't understand that the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. God is everywhere. All matter that matter is that let's do the will of God. <laughs> Praise God. And if you commit yourself to God's hand, he answers prayers anywhere. Praise God. Some people, they will tell you the history of the mountains more than the CAC person. They say, ah, this is so CAC. Ah, this mountain. It is uh, when Baba Joseph Ayodele Babala, we pray on that mountain. You know this and that. He calls the Baba Oriokes. I've told them the story, the history. The question you will ask yourself, if I'm not a Nigerian, 
if I'm not a, if I'm a Ghanaian, I don't know who Joseph Ayodele Babala was. And I'm not even privileged to even visit Nigeria all my life. The mountains that Babalola has prayed that now become Ori okay, this, the mountain of this, the mountain of this, the mountain of this, praise God, that people now ask that if you don't go there, there will not be victory. If I am a Kenyan, praise God. There are some songs that I query, not because, not because I, not because I, I mean, I have respect for great men of God. Hallelujah. Any songs you sing, and you see, you mention God of Adeboye, I don't like that song. Any song you sing and say God of Kumuyi, I hate that song. Not because they are not men of God. There is one now that is uh, moving. Uh, Olorun, 1930. Eh? Eh? Oh, yeah. Praise God. Olorun 1930 Olorun Babalola Olorun 1930 Leave Babalola alone let the man continue to rest Since 1930 so there is nobody that can occupy that space or there are no people that God has positioned that are doing exploit more than Babalola I can tell you in our generation in this country there are people God is using more than the way he used Babalola Either you like it, or you take it, or you leave it. But in the CAC, don't even in CAC, people that go use more than Babalola. How what was the age of Babalola? How many places was he able to visit in his lifetime? Did you hear that Babalola got to Kenya? That he got to Ghana? Maybe the, the place, the, the closest place you could go is crossing the border to be in a republic. And you see men of God that are doing great things. Miracles, eyes are opening, legs are walking. So many things that God is using men to do around the globe. And somebody still believes that uh, this the God of, it's only God of Babalola that can do it. He's my God also. I don't know about you. So I don't know all those kind of things, coloration, this and that. They are sensual. It's only, you know, for the flesh. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm not condemning whatever anybody is in, but I'm only trying when I say some things on this altar, it's for us to learn. It's for us to understand. Like always, I always say that now, that in this church, I will never produce a sticker and said member redemption family church i hate it praise god if i want to pre if i want to do any sticker at all i'll write member church of i mean body of christ or member or in christ anything that has to do that we are one in christ not all this segregation little little things so that if I see member Anglican, member Catholic, member, it's only I know deeper life will never do that kind of thing. You know, I, I trust them. Praise God. Member redeem, member all these things. Member CAC, what is it telling us? We say we should be member of the body of Christ. Shout hallelujah. And that's the problem of the church. When you see Muslim, you don't know who won the, who is Nawaruddin, who is Ansaruddin, who is this and that. Hallelujah. No, they don't, they don't care about that. I learned that in a particular state that, um, that the governor is building, you know, a massive mosque. And in a meeting of the Christians, and he said that, um, now that, what do you want me to do for you? The Christian cannot answer. Because Baptist is there. Anglican is there. Pentecostal is there. Nobody can talk. Praise God. Because which name do you want that church to be built? There was not saying something that I said. They let them tell the governor to build an ecumenical center. Let it build a church, the one we have in Abu Dhabi. Let it be built an ecumenical so that any church that wants to use it, Abi, they can come and do what? And use it. That's our problem. Little, little things. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. There are so many we use a lot of things because our attention is shifting from the grace that God provides. If you see a sick person now, he's doing program. After you do that, they will put the picture of Babalola at the background. Abi, let the man rest. Thank God he's resting. You put the picture of Babalola at the ground, eh? As if that picture is going to deliver miracle at this time. I don't know whether you are getting my point. You see Pentecostal also now, when they do something, <clears throat> they, when you do that something, they will now put the picture. They can't even put the picture of Baba Adeboye. As if he's coming to that program, he's not coming now. He's part of gimmicks. They will set it that you say, ah, Baba must be coming to that program. It is just gimmicks. Have a fitai journey. Why? Our attention is shifting from God to man. We are having respect for man of God more than the God of man. I don't know why they get it. We respect the man of God. We dispraise the God of the man. How do I know? If I tell you, Pastor Ye Adeboye will be here. 9 a.m. today. You will have been here at 8 a.m. Three of us. You'll be here. Ah! Baba is coming. Because you believe that as he's coming, he's coming with a load of anointing, Abi. That, ah, I will not miss this one. If no matter whether you travel and you, and you slept 1 a.m., that thing will make you to wake up. To make sure that 8 a.m. And I announced and said, we want everybody to be seated by 8 a.m. Uh, I know some of you, you'll be here 7. Thank you. I know some people will not say, what am I waiting? Do what I want to do? And to, he will carry his clothes. Now that the church has bathroom and everything, what am I looking for? He will meet me here. And we believe that the closer you are to the front, the more the anointing will touch you. Praise God. So, but ordinary day, if watch us come out to the front, some of you, you have your seat at the back, back seated. The day the usher say, come to the front, you will fight without usher. It's just as if the usher should know that you have a registered seat. You disobey all usher and you want God to bless you in that service. He won't bless you. Praise God. Because the, the usher is a servant of God. According to this place, everyone according to the gifts even so let him minister every person that is doing one thing or the other is a minister of god the bible says that we are the able ministers of the new testament hallelujah even israelites when they were moving from egypt you know to the promised land the bible said god did not suffer any man to do them any evil God rebuked nations for their sake. How did God introduce Israel? Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Who was God referring to? Israelites. Both baby, both adult, God said they are my prophets. They are my ministers. They are my anointed. Praise the Lord. So that young girl or that young person who is an usher, who is working the, in, the, in a protocol, who is so so and so, is representing God and is representing me. Praise God. He's representing the church authority when he's giving you an instruction and you will disobey that instruction without any genuine reason and you want that God of all grace to visit you. He will not visit you. When God was talking to Samuel was talking to Saul. He told Saul, he said, <laughs> when you are small in your eyes, when you are, sorry, little in your eyes, that when you are humble, God made you to be the king of his people. Go and destroy the Amalekites. He did not fulfill all the instruction. He destroyed all the bad animals that are not good, but the spear very good, you know, fat cows and things like that and Agag, the king and God told Samuel, said, look, the man you are praying for, he has disappointed me again he has not obeyed my voice the Bible says Samuel pray all the night and said, look, go 
And he now went to go and meet Saul. And Saul said, oh, servant of God, we have done according to the word of God. And Samuel said, you mean it? What is the sound of living that I'm hearing in your courtyard? Oh, I forgot to mention that. You know, we destroy everything. But the fattest of the cow, the animals, good rams, that to sacrifice unto God, we spear them. And of course, King Agag. That King Agag, you know, you know, uh, uh, what's the name of their country now? Praise God. That is, this king is experienced. Maybe, let's just use him, let's draw some of his uh, experiences. And Samuel said, do you think God is interested in burnt offering like in obeying the voice of God? To obey is better than what? Sacrifice. Now, sacrifice, burnt offering, God accepts it. But God is now saying that there is something more vital than that. It's obeying him first. But as far as Samuel, I mean Saul was concerned, he thought that he has obeyed the voice of God. And God, and Samuel said, to obey God is better than sacrifice. So, you want to come to church uh, sacrifice of praise, you want to sing, you want to give offering, those are our sacrifices today. Abi, we are not we are not slaughtering animal and put it on fire to whatever. Praise God. But obedience should come before sacrifice. Somebody follow me this morning. Everybody that God has positioned, God says that as every man I receive the gifts. So, for those who are ministering, whatever God asks you to do, do as everyone has received gifts. Don't do what God did not grace you to do. Because what God commissioned you to do is what God is going to bless. It's what God is going to strengthen. Praise God. It's what is going to increase. He said that as good stewards of what? Everyone say manifold. Say it again. So manifold means grace in different folds. Grace in different areas. Grace in abundance. Shout hallelujah. The grace of God is the every heart of the gospel. Grace is the heart of the gospel. And what makes Christianity different from all other man-made religions? It is grace that makes Christianity to be different from all other man-made religion. It is the grace. The grace of God that is released. The grace of God that is made available. It is the heart. Means that it is the center point of the Christian faith. Because without the grace of God that brings salvation through the death of Jesus, nobody can be saved. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. It is this Jesus. is the embodiment of the grace. It's the grace that is released. It's the grace that is unleashed upon humanity. It is by grace that we are what we are by the grace of God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So, you can see that we have manifold temptations. But God provides manifold grace. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. We there are manifold temptations. There are things to test us. But the Bible has told us that we are sin abounds. Their grace is much more abound. So, I read just as we will use different means to battle different natural disasters. There are different ways to solve different natural disasters. Do you understand what I mean? Praise God. I say praise the Lord. If there is an eruption of fire, there is a means of scientific way, way of what? Combating it. Am I right? If it is a, a kind of a volcano, of if there is a snowfall, there is a way of taking, taking care of it. 
many natural or things that happen there are different ways of bringing solution the same thing everything that comes our way grace supply different ways of settling them that's what he say say the same thing god will provide a specific grace that is needed for each spiritual battle every battle that comes our way there is a grace to confront it there is a kind of grace to subdue it and that's why it is manifold grace grace in different areas God will provide the specific grace that is needed for each spiritual battle we fight if we truly seek him for it and open ourselves to receive the grace. You see, I don't want you to be somebody in your eyes. A proud man will not pray before he acts. It will depend on his intellect. You say, I know it. I know it. Shout hallelujah. Since I've been preaching, it's always at the back of my mind that every opportunity to stand to preach, it is by grace. And I always remind myself, man, you are not a specialist. Even if I preach on this topic and I'm asked to come and preach in another church on that topic, I'm not going to rest on the grace that I'm using now. I'm open for God to do his own work to speak through me in the same way. If I preach on this topic in the, let's say I preach in the first service and I want to preach in the second service, the approach will be different. Praise God. The approach will be different. Why? I am not coming in as a specialist. I'm depending on the grace of God. There are times that I'm preaching to young people my children to people that are you know that are young people on campus and that now and i'm preaching i want to tell you anybody that approach pulpits you must tremble and fear before the almighty god you should never think that you are sufficient in yourself it is a privilege to speak to god's heritage it's a privilege to handle microphone it's a privilege to speak in a seminar it's a privilege to be a sunday school teacher it's a privilege to be a choir. And that's why the Bible says, what do you have that is not given to you? For you to think that I am ah, me, I'm the soloist. My voice better pass their voices. I tell you, when God will receive, will, will take that voice from you. You don't know that voice used to knock. Abby? Praise God. <laughs> you don't know voice can knock. Eh? You have never seen people that their voice knock. You have seen before. Ah. So, by the time the voice is knock, is now useless. They just say, people like that, if they don't want to disgrace them from the choir, we'll put them at the back. You won't give them microphone, no, because that voice must not be heard through the microphone. You will now put it on just your ordinary uniform. Praise God. You decorate yourself, but there is no power. Body without engine. Because engine is gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. May your case never be like that in Jesus' name. Amen. Even in your secular work, don't be proud. As God lifts you up, be humble the more. Approach. They say, yes, you are to deliver, you know, at the conference, there is a proposal, you are to present in behalf of the organization, you have something, you have to take a lead paper, this and that. After you have done the intellectual aspect, throw it to God. The God of all grace. Lord, let your grace speak for me. Lord, as I deliver this paper, Lord, let your grace speak through me. So that at the end of the day, it is when God's grace they speak. Everybody, wow! Look at the people presentation. It's an academic forum, but ah, look, he presented this. And the next time, another seminar is waiting for you somewhere. Is that not so? Another time, they said he must come to Abuja to come and take that man. That man we met in that conference. Have you ever asked like that? Now he must come and ah, in fact, he delivered that paper. You know, intelligently. They say he's intelligent, but you know it is grace. There is no any intelligence, it is grace that spoke for you. 
But somebody who rely on his power and said, Me, I've been delivering paper. What is this? This thing? I'm a specialist. Maybe it is the area of science, the area of engineering, the area of agriculture. What I want to say that I don't know how to say. Ah, you will say it, people will not hear you. There are times you preach like this. Ask people, what did I say? They don't hear you. And if they don't hear you, they won't invite you again. Praise the Lord. They say, we don't even know what that man said. He preached. In fact, <clears throat> if it's a place they want to give you an honorarium, they wanted to give you 100, they will reduce it to 50. We did not even see what he did. Because grace did not act on your behalf. May you begin to spend grace. There is a difference between spending money and spending grace. <clears throat> a man that spends grace is never put to shame. A man that spends grace is never static. I will tell you that everything that will be done at that particular time will come his way. The your own calculation, look at the state of our economy now. Your own thinking is naira, 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 money, 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 money. Praise God. Ah, this is how much they sell yam. This is how much this and that. Ah, this is because of this and that. Ah. You have never, have, you know. So God, give me money, you know, in order to feed my family. Hallelujah. Why do you put the condition of money? Why not God just supply all my needs? Praise God. And somebody decides to come and give you a bag of rice. So that in the next one or two months, you don't even need to pray along that line. Are you getting my point now? If money is not everything, the Bible says money failed in Egypt. Money became useless in Egypt. And Joseph was in charge. Because by wisdom, the storehouse has been filled up. And what happened? More, you know, Joseph was a, a good businessman. He helped King Pharaoh to, is it Pharaoh? Yes. He helped Pharaoh to take over all the assets of, Egy of, of Egypt. That people now say, Joseph, I don't have anything, no money. Money has failed. Money has, is worthless. But I have 10 acres of land. Can I give you, God, the, you these 10 acres of land so that I can have some rice or wheat to eat? Okay, 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 bring it, sign it off. Praise God. He will give them food in exchange of land for land. He will give them food in exchange of properties because everything, money has failed. And they were now exchanging what they have for money, for food, what to eat. And when that one was going, the Bible says he was building, you know, he was building structures. For the kingdom because of his wisdom may I, may I pray for you at this time of state of things in this nation may the Lord give you wisdom Amen. to weather the storm may the Lord give you wisdom Amen. to prosper may the Lord give you wisdom Amen. don't depend on money alone just open yourself up and see what God is going to do on your behalf grace is what we are talking about. Manifold manifestations of God comes in the manifestation of grace in the life of a man. So that is what grace does. He said, manifold grace of God. Manifold grace of God. If you enjoy grace in the area of health, you can enjoy the area of your academics, you can enjoy in the area of your career, you can enjoy. Just plug into grace in your business. Just plug into grace. Lord, I trust you. Lord, let your grace be made available. Let your grace be released over my life. You are not praying ordinary prayer. When you finish, we finish service now, before we go, say, okay, we are going May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. It is not just a tradition. That is how it was established in the early church. Okay? That we have done everything by grace. Now we are stepping out. Let grace take the lead. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God the Father. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. In other words, you are to walk in grace. Grace cover you until we meet again. Praise God. No accident. No untimely death. Anybody that is covered by grace, you will not land in the hospital. If devil tells you you land in the hospital, you will come out with your legs. Hallelujah. Because grace, that's it is a prayer. When we finish now, we'll still recite it. Some people it's just ordinary memory verse. They don't understand the message and the anointing there. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now. 
am forever. Praise God. In other words, I am conscious that I am inside the grace of God. What I'm doing, it is done by me, the grace of God. So I invite the grace into it. I call the grace into it. I am not sufficient in myself. I call the grace into it. Hallelujah. Are you getting it? Church, are you getting it? Yes, knowledge is power. You can pray and you lack knowledge. It's not going to work. God is not emotional. You can do some things, this and that, and say, uh, if you like, go and call the Lord on 1930. Praise God. Say, God of 1930. 1930, long, long. Praise God. <laughs> 1930, you're made a little in 1930. All of 1930. Tolo, I've been down with drive by 1930. I don't know whether you understand, but that's the truth. Did you hear that Apostle Babalola has a car? Did you read about that? If you want the Allah 1930, the God of 1930 to answer into your matter, ah, your, your car will, will knock. <laughs> Praise God. Something you think will happen will not happen because it is the God of 19, which means God who operates at the 1930 level. I mean, let God come and operate at that level. Don't pray it for our church, you pray it for yourself. God operate at that, my life. God, all right, it's a 1930 level because you think that God is limited to 1930. You think God is limited to 1930. You don't know that God who has manifold of grace that the greater thing, things that highest have not seen, things that they could not see in 1930 is happening in our days. Not 1930. Even not 1930. When we gave our life to Christ, you know, maybe in the 80s, what am I saying? In the 70s, the best church is Plank Church. Church of Paco Colan Loon. Abby? Church to buy Jaja, call eh? Do blocks. At times today, when I pass through some place, if I see some churches, I, you know what used to come to my mind? How can human beings come and worship here? Praise the Lord. And you see that I said this church has been there for 20 years. No, their window is uh, sick. The entrance door is sick. There is nothing like. Um, you know, upgrading facilities because they believe that uh, and you just go in somewhere and uh, you are in just one corner and that just be bringing bell as if that bell will bring people. Even no matter the anointing you have, you carry, the place will just be a mere clinic. People will receive miracle and go away. They can identify with that place. Shout hallelujah. If they give that person, <laughs> I don't want to say some things. I'm online. Praise God. If they give somebody some money, there is a situation that look, you know, that um, a church was pulled down and um, and we have to fight so that, 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 that they should recompense, you know, the person. When they recompense the person, it's a small church. When the person saw the money that he has never seen in his life, he be supposed to use that money to buy the first thing he went to go and buy a house. Praise God. He does not even so he just buy no ah, money that until he dies. He believes that he can never see that money again. If ministry is number one priority, you know it's how to expand that ministry. Is that not so? The place of worship to look for a good place to this and that to look at this and this and that. Mm. That's why Yoruba says, when somebody has, he said, when somebody has money, he says, another man's character. Have you got so now? One end. <laughs> uh -huh. When you don't have money, it's another man's character. He says, ah. he says, man, that man is gentle, he's quiet. Ah, money no day for his hand. The pride that is locked up in his heart will not show because there is no money. But let them let him have money. Agbarade. Eh? Eh? Praise God. If you call him, you will not. The person he's speaking is called before. He can pick call. Just say, send, send test. Send test. I am busy. Send test. 
And he said, ah, I called you the last time you did my call. Well, if I call, if you call me, you don't pick up, you call again. Why? This person you are talking about, he's seen one million for the first time in his life. His character now begins to manifest. <laughs> Praise God. If you now see 50 million, you know he will faint. He will go and buy a dog if he does not have dog before. <laughs> Praise God. Eh? You have not seen houses. Maybe this one small dog they have, they will put the way of dog at the entrance of the house. <laughs> You know, you know, there are dogs you have, you guys, the dog wants to, I say, give me your mouth shot, and the dog will, will, will reverse. <laughs> Praise God. That's the kind of dog, but it's, beware of dogs. So, just to tell you, I see the dog in his eyes like a lion. Now, lie. That is the character of some people. Praise God. I say, shout hallelujah. That is, that is it. If you don't flow in grace, that person will be static you will not go far Romans chapter 5 verse 2 I'll begin to close Romans chapter 5 verse 2 Romans chapter 5 verse sorry, yes verse 2 Romans 5 2 are you there he said where he said by whom also we have access we have what access by what by faith hallelujah we're going to pray now this grace you have access into this manifold grace by faith so by whom also we have access by faith into what this grace where we we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Say, so by whom also we have access by faith. Now, all that I have said, the manifold grace, every area of grace you want in your life, you can only access it by what? By faith. All that I have been saying, if you don't believe it, it cannot work for you. If you believe that this is the true word, Amen. I'm not sending you to go and criticize church. That's what I'm saying. You are in this congregation. I'm only telling you that, look, our God is the God of now. He's the same yesterday. He's them today. He's them forever. Our God is God of now. Our God is full of grace. Hallelujah. He's full of grace. God can do all things. Don't limit God to what he has done in your life 10 years ago. <clears throat> Praise God. He can do much more than that. He can do much more than that. You have not seen anything yet. You have not seen God in this fullness. You cannot even see the fullness of God. Praise God. But the one you see, the Bible says, the one that we see, they are for us. All secreting belongs to God. The secreting, the one he released to you and said, wow, that your life will become a wow. Praise God. I say, wow, God has done it for him. And they say, oh, God, you that have done this, Lord, you can do much more for me. That is the how to pray. It's not that God, what you have done for Susan, so come and do it for me. Amen. No, God, you have done it for this person. You can do much more in my life. So, by faith, as you pray this morning, the question is, where do you want the manifestation of this grace? This manifold manifestation, which aspect do you need it? Is it in your area of business? Is it in your area of intellectual capacity or academics? Is it in the area of your career? Is it in the area of marriage or family life? Amen. If you are facing oppression in marriage, you are facing oppression, you know, in your business, you are facing oppression, all what you need to do is to invite the grace of God to take over. Amen. You are telling Jesus, take over. Let everything that want to disgrace me be disgraced. Let everything that want to hinder me, let it be moved out of the way. That is what grace does. Grace is what leads us. Grace is what empowers us. And like I said, when God begins to lift you up, don't be, don't be proud. Alright? Be yourself. See, depend on God. Let God know that God, I am nothing without you. My life depends on you. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. 
Let's rise up to pray this morning. In our song, we said, we are sung about the marvelous grace of our loving God. Grace that exceeds our sin. Because this grace is what puts an end, you know. The Bible talks about manifold temptation, you know. It is grace that is grace, manifold temptation. I put something in my note here. I said, what does a manifold temptation mean? The apostle tells us clearly, ye are in heaviness, says it through manifold temptations manifold not only many in number but of many kinds that's why in greek it is called poikilois they may be varied and diversified a thousand ways by the change or addition of numberless circumstances that is what we call manifold even temptation is in manifolds and that's why grace also is what well in manifolds we are sin abounds we are temptation abound there is enough grace to counter it hallelujah i don't know what you are struggling with in your life grace this same grace it called jesus lord i need your grace to be free from this character but if you don't pray you are not going to get it for everything you need grace is available close your eyes this morning and begin to pray let me allow you to pray you know, I say, Lord, I need your grace in this aspect or the other aspect of my life. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth when the church, the church service, open your mouth and pray. Commit yourself to God's hand. Any aspect, God, <laughs> I'm just showing you what Jesus is to us. We are called into this glory. We are called to enjoy this grace. Begin to pray. Your career can shine. You can make progress. In your academics in everything you do you can shine forth tell god god i need your grace don't depend on your strength the strength of man will fail our strength will fail our ability will fail you calculated it when i do this i will do this i will do this i will do this it, you know many people have done such things and they still fail the business you are doing some people have done that business and they sank even with a lot of money they put into it but there is a place of God in our life. The place of grace in our lives. The Bible says that by faith we should enter into this grace. So as you are praying today, you are believing in your prayers. You believe that things will change from this moment. That you are stepping out of today is going to be a new experience, you know, outrightly. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. It's only if you don't have any prayer points. If you don't, it's only if you don't have any area you want grace, you know, to redefine your life but if you have area where you are trusting God for God's grace you talk to God this morning and say Lord I need your grace to be made manifest to succeed in this area how I wish you pray more there are time to pray whatever you have had in the sermon pray it and say God I want to be free from sin let the grace of God that brings salvation deliver me Break the yoke of sin. Break the yoke of carnality. Destroy the works of the devil. What is that thing you need from God? Tell him now. In the time of famine, the Bible says that we shall eat in plenty. That is what grace made provisions for. How God will do it? That is not your headache. That is not your problem. Just plug into grace. You are still praying as if you have no prayer point. <laughs> Open your mouth and pray. Call upon God. He will answer you. And have faith. 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 Not just I'm praying empty prayer. No. Have faith in your prayer. That God will help you. That God will move you forward. That God will help you. That God will, will, will surprise you. There will be manifestations of God's glory in your life. That contract, you are going to make an headway in that business. That project, there will be a way. You have tried all your efforts. Contact, connect yourself to grace this morning. Let grace step, step into the matters of my life. You will come back and give testimony. There will be manifestation of God's, of, of, of God's glory. God can
can promote you. He can usher you to greater heights. You have not seen anything. And that's why you must not be proud. Where God is taking you to is far. The level he's taking you to is far. So don't be proud. Don't be arrogant. Don't misbehave. Because the Bible says God look at the proud from afar off. He will not allow that person to come near. He will look at the proud from afar off. Don't come near. Don't come near. Don't come near. May your story not be like that. But the Bible says he give grace to the humble. Can you see now? He look at the proud afar off but he gives grace to the humble. What do you have? God can give you much more. Tell the, tell the Lord and say, God, set to me this month. Give me that scripture. I said, we're going to use it to pray. First Peter five ten. First Peter five ten. Give it. Let's have this on the screen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Are you there? In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I want you to pray these prayers. Let me turn this. Don't worry, by God's grace, that our other TV will be fixed soon. Hallelujah! But look at that scripture. Look at that scripture. He says that grace, we do what? We perfect you. We establish you. We strengthen you. And we settle you. You have been running etaskata. You will not run etaskata any longer. Use those things to pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for your business. Open your mouth now and begin to pray in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Tell the Lord God. <laughs> Let your grace perfect me. Let my Christian life be perfected. Let everything about my life perfect. Whether you close eyes or you open eyes, God will answer you. Can you see? He said, God, perfect me. Any area you need God to perfect, you tell God about it. Can you tell the Lord and say, God, establish me. I want the establishment in my career. In my academics, I want establishment. Lord, establish me. A man that is established is a man that is renowned, that is known. When they talk about that field of profession, they will mention him. When they talk about who can help us in that business, people will mention his name, even from far countries. Lord, establish me. Pray that prayer. Lord, strengthen me. Give me strength. I will not be sick. My emotions, I will not be sick. Psychologically, I will not be sick. Strengthen my mind. Strengthen my heart. Strengthen my body, Lord. To be able to do what I need to do. You are praying for yourself. Oh. Remember your children. God said to my children. God, strengthen my children. Lord, perfect the lives of my children. Let them live for you. And say, God, settle me. <laughs> you know what it means to settle. Our evil brother, they said, my God, not settle me. To settle means that the brand of the business that is helping his boss to do for 10 years, now he's having his own shop. They are now establishing him to start that line of business. But God can do more than that. God, settle me. Let your mercy find me out. Let me enjoy favor, season of favor. Lord, settle me. Settle me, oh God. Settle me. That Lord, people will see your glory upon my life. Lord, settle me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 
as you are praying that prayer i can see god spirit moving around walking over all these prayer points in your life the lord is settling you in marriage god settled me in my family like god settled me anything i see as problem today oh lord god almighty strengthen me intervene my marriage oh lord settle me if your husband is far off and you are there you want god to settle your marriage god can you know what to do to bring you and your husband together god can do all things he can make all grace abound god settle me so connect to grace by faith connect to grace by faith connect to grace by faith Harvest your miracles by faith. Thank you, Father. Believe God this morning. Your miracle begins today. The God of all grace will help you. As you walk out of this place today, miracle begins to happen. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me give you the last prayer point that the Spirit of God wants us to pray. There are some of you that have been forgotten. Men must begin to remember you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like I said, when I preach at times, I want something that is nearby. My wife, what we were talking, was saying that um, she was praying for me. They said the lives that I have imparted, the children that God has given to me, that they should begin to remember me. He was telling me, of course, my wife telling me that, look at what this person is doing. Look at what this person is saying. There are others that are other nations, praise God, that they must begin to give back. I said, good. You will not like that kind of prayer from your wife. Praise God. I'm not there when she was doing that prayer. But we're just talking. And that is the truth. Hallelujah. I have sons that are faithful. Like the one that always owes me just like when I'm there, I'm home. Praise God. It is what I want to eat, I eat. You think I eat, sit, go there to eat burger. I eat tamala. I eat whatever I want to eat. Praise God. You know, I have room there. There are some of my loads I don't bring home. I have place I put my load there. And takes care of me. And some and some like that that now say ah that is when God puts you in the heart of people God will you take bring you a case to be a project in the heart of some people Amen. listen to this there are people that your parents have helped in their little way you remember in those days our parents they don't cook food for us alone they will cook food for our friends. Abi, they will make sure that a uh, paradventure, if he's coming home, he may not come alone. That is good heart. And they are not in vain. There is no good that is in vain. But the person that will harvest is what you do not know. Some people do good, they don't even know anything. They do, do, do and they did not enjoy it. You harvest it all because it has been planted by your parents. I don't know whether you understand. I want you to pray. People that need to remember me. Many of you should not be struggling. Wherever they are on the globe, they must remember me. Book of remembrance must be opened. People that will assist me, people that will support me, that will carry me and I will become a project. My children must not suffer. They must not be looking for a job. Hallelujah. When your parents have helped some people, other people's children in the past, lift up your two hands to heaven. Say, my father. My father. My father in the name of Jesus. Cause me to be remembered. Let people that will help me, wherever they are, let them begin to remember me and begin to do me good. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray that prayer. There is nothing God will do without instrument of man. God will always use human being. Why don't you pray and say, God, uh -uh. the good that my parents have done caused me to have it. God will show mercy to fourth generation. Let God show me mercy. 
Lord, those that are supposed to remember me, you have encouraged them. Some you even contributed to their traveling abroad, but they don't remember you again. They don't want to pick your phone. Let heaven compel men today. Let heaven compel men. That grace will compel them to remember you. To give back to you. So that you might be established. So that you might be settled. Tell the Lord God, let grace open doors for me in the heart of men. That everything that will make my children to enjoy in life, let it begin to flow in. When some people are nobody, God has used you for them. God, you are a rewarder. Lord, reward me, oh God. I need help also, oh God. I need to be settled. I need to be strengthened. I need to be established. I need to be perfected. Lord, do this in my life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. His name is higher than every other name. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. His name is higher than any other name. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. His name is Lord. is above every name and that at the mention of the name of Jesus every knee must bow another name of Jesus is grace that's why the Bible said the grace chapter 2 verse 11 title says the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men Jesus is called grace there is the grace that brings salvation father lord we are talking about what you can do even beyond our imaginations talking about manifold manifestations which is also manifestations of your grace i pray that every heart that has called unto you this morning or this afternoon every heart that has cried unto you we are the need the grace to manifest father let there be a release of grace let your manifold grace Father, attend to every life in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your manifold grace carry these people. 
from the low land to the high land in the name of Jesus. Let your grace take them from walking to flying. Soaring. In the name of Jesus. I pray, oh Lord, grace, not door. The Bible talks about great grace. Every door that needs to be knocked. Every door that must be opened. For these people, Lord Jehovah God, to enjoy the manifold grace of God. Let the door be open now. Men that need to answer them, to help them, wherever they are, let the door be open now. Every establishment, company, corporation, where their file or application is spending, oh Lord, where the contract paper is spending, let grace open the door now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every achievement, every attainment, every fulfillment in every aspect of life, in business, in career, in academics, everything that has been Lord over that has been delayed. Let grace appear. Let grace appear. Let grace get it done. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, who is that person that will bring anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that's, that what? That justify. Hallelujah. I was telling them in the vigil that the exam that I have to do, PhD exam, I know there are some troublesome professors. I just pray, I say, God, this nobody must bring any charge against me. I say, any people that are not wanted in that exam, that they must not come. And sincerely, you they did not show up. Hallelujah. Because there are people, you know, you know, there are a lot of politics in academics. Somebody likes somebody's face. If it's not your candidate, you know, somebody wants to do some things. Amen. I just say, God, they must. I'm surprised. After me that I prayed, I'm surprised that they did not see them. Praise God. Shout hallelujah. That is what grace does. You want to do anything. Somebody wants to query you. Who wants to query you? Just do your best and let grace take over. I pray, let there be really us of grace. Begin to swear in grace. Begin to enjoy grace. Be propelled by grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. From today, you will no longer struggle. Let the grace of God perfect you. I pray the grace of God in the name of Jesus Christ to strengthen you. Let the grace of God establish you. And let the grace of God settle you. You'll be settled. Maritally settled. Financially settled. Academically settled. Every aspect of your life, may you be settled. May men come and congratulate you. The door of your congratulation is open. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Not in my name. It's not the name of God of France of our nation. Land. No. It's the name of God of Jesus and our all our God. We are to pray in the name of Jesus. To go through the name of Jesus. Not in the name of any human being. There is no any human name that can bring spices to your prayer. It's the only name that is above all that is given to us. If you know how to use the God, God of so and so, oh, you answer for me. God so and so, you are missing it. It's not just the God of so so and so, it's your God. But more importantly, there is a name that is given to us. Use that name. Don't just sweat for nothing you think you are praying. I pray that the name of Jesus Christ will establish you. The name of Jesus will open the door for you. By next Sunday, you will testify of the goodness of the Lord. Your health shall not be compromised. You will not be sick. You will not be hospitalized. This grace will preserve you. No death. No accident. No calamity. No shame. No poverty. In the name of Jesus. You will hear good news. So shall it be. In the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Son. In the name of God the Holy Spirit. So shall it be. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Say amen three times. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Just stand up like that. We're about to go. Our Bible study is a must be in the Bible study. Another way of constantly grace is through the, the word of God. The last video we had, some of you did not come. It was awesome. Great thing that God is doing. Not only when, you know, when singing was going, deliverance was taking place. People falling under their night without anybody touching them. Praise God. That is what, when God presents is somewhere. Don't miss it. And the big one that is coming, our Ignite 2023, what feast? Please don't miss it. The, th the team is the anointed. It took me time before God that came out with that topic. The person, as I said, look, what I wrote, I said, I'm still coming. I went to so the anointed. I began to see when somebody is anointed, what it does. Hallelujah. You need the anointing. And you'll be called the anointed. God said, I have found David, my servant. My, with my holy oil have I anointed him. Therefore, his hand shall be on the neck of his enemy. You, your hand, you cannot conquer enemy if you are not anointed. He said, his hand will be stretched to the sea. You'll be stretched to everywhere. Prosperity will come. Is by, because when God certifies you as the anointed, and that is what God wants to do in this meeting. It's all about the Holy Spirit. If you have been coming, that's why it's called Beyond Pentecost or Ignite. Amen. You will see God raw. And it's going with fasting and prayers. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Amen. Amen. If, you have, if you don't have the flyers, the ushers will give to you before you go. Invite yourself first before you give to another person. But those who want to help spiritually, you want, they are challenges, bring them. This place must be filled throughout the five days. And the Lord will establish, give us even more members. And I want to say lastly that there are people that are your friends. Invite them to church. If you are blessed in this church, make the announcement. Invite your friend. Come to our church. He said his church is fantastic, wonderful. Visit our church first. Amen. Maybe that day, that thing that is just like the testimony we had on, uh, on Tuesday, uh, uh, sorry, on Wednesday, it was not just in fact, I didn't go to the Bible study again. It was testimony, testimony of the encounter of people through the word of God in this church that we are hearing and at the end of the day, we are blessed. Hallelujah. Now, there is something that is waiting for somebody. That long time problem, there is a word for it. When the word of Joseph came, this king sent to prison, bring him out of prison. Nobody could have done that. His word came, your word will come. So, be proud of your church. Invite your friends. Invite the loved ones. Tell people, your, your neighbors. Say, I want to invite to our church. You have not invited them. They have been waiting. They wanted to come, but because you have not invited them, they love you, they respect you, but sometimes we have not gone. Say, Look, I, want to, can, can you, I want to invite you to our church. And they say, yes, I want to go. That's how it is. And as you do that, God will bless you much more. Shall we share the grace in fellowship? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. If you are here for the